All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to TSSA Talks. This is Brian Johnson. I'm coming to you from the Exit Inn. We're so excited about our partnership between Tennessee State Soccer Association and Exit Inn, this historic music venue here in Nashville, Tennessee, where we are doing this live video series that's coming to you on tape delay, but we're live and excited to create it here at the Exit Inn in partnership with them, much like ourselves as a nonprofit, uh, the folks here that run the venue at Exit Inn, Chris and Talisha Cobb and their team, uh, they've also been significantly impacted by COVID-19 pandemic. And so we'd encourage you to go and take a look at their site. We've got some co-branded merchandise we're going to try to throw out as a way to uh, raise money for both organizations. But we hope you're having a, a great time coming in and hearing some of these conversations. We had a really great part one conversation with Simone Charlie, who's our guest today, uh, about her life growing up, coming up, chasing her brothers and sisters all over the place and down the triple jump pit. And then how she ended up coming unannounced to Vanderbilt University and finding her way on to being an all SEC performer in both track and soccer over her career. So Simone, thank you again for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. This is awesome. So at this point, we are here on Van we're here at Vanderbilt. You're now a lady door. You're uh, ready to start competing on the soccer team. But I mean, your career did not come without challenges. It's, it's not like you just had everything, every break go your way your whole time. During your career, there were injuries that you had to deal with. During your career, there's a coaching change you had to deal with. So if you could, take us through your years as a Vanderbilt Commodore and let us know how that has helped to shape you and then lead us into your professional career. Yeah. Um, let's see. So I get to Vandy. I was really honestly just so excited to be there. <laughs> I was like, this is the, literally the dream. Um, yeah. And my first year um, as a team, I think it was a little frustrating year for us. I know we had a lot of new players, a lot of people coming in, and it just it took us a little bit to hit our stride um, and still just kind of getting used to playing with each other. And also for me personally, just getting adjusted to playing at the college level um, was definitely an adjustment for me. Um, I ended up, when you talk about injuries, I ended up spraining my MCL towards the end of my freshman year. And so that also was new for me because I had never, that was up until that point, probably the most significant injury that I had had. And so just having to go through rehab literally the entire off season and walk around with the clunky knee brace and even with the track season. So track season starts normally two months or so after soccer season. So I remember even having to triple jump with my knee brace on and like figure out how to do all of that. Um, and then also just balancing that with being a freshman in college. And with just... the easy academic rigors at Vanderbilt University, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I just remember my first year, especially just, it was challenging, especially just being homesick and missing my friends. School was challenging. Soccer was an adjustment. So yeah, it was definitely not the easiest my first year. Um, I would say then going into my sophomore year, that I think is when things started to change a little bit for me. Um, you know, you come back your second year, you are more used to everything. You've been here. Vandy's starting to feel a little bit more like home for me, uh, making more friends, all of that. Um, and I think as a team, we definitely improved more that year and so I think that that was definitely helpful confidence wise um I also started meeting with we had a sports psychologist at Vandy Vicky and she was amazing to say the least <laughs> um started talking with her my uh actually the end of my freshman year and that was definitely very helpful for me um and then my junior year we that's when we had a coaching change mm -hmm. and that was intense, to, <laughs> I would say. In That's the a good word to describe Darren. He's a friend, too. And so <laughs> yeah. it's intense is, is a good way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that was definitely a challenge. It was also interesting for me just with, like, he came in the spring of my sophomore year. And so I was running track at the time. And so his first semester here, I wasn't even at soccer practice. 
but I was living with Lid and Claire, like a couple of my soccer teammates. So they would like come back from morning practice and be like, Simone, guess what we did the training today? <laughs> I hope Darren hears this. He would, well, I'll make sure Darren. He would for sure be laughing. <laughs> but but it's got to be really challenging emotionally for you and just nerve wracking to think, well, all these girls are, he's getting to know them. He's getting to see you know, I'm sure when they make mistakes, but also he's getting to see them work through and have hard times and excel and come through. And, and you're just not getting that chance to build that kind of relationship yet. That's got to be tough. Yeah, for sure. That was definitely something on my mind. And I remember, so I normally during track season, so track season was January to June. And then soccer was normally August to like November. And so I remember in March is normally when we'd have our spring games for soccer and I would normally be running track at the time, but then, you know, it's Darren's first year and he was like, I want you to come to training so we can just like see how you're, how you are and like get used to playing. <laughs> I hadn't like played because I was running track and I remember I came and was training in March and I, I sucked, to say the least. I was sucking hard. And I remember being so stressed. And I would, like, call my mom after every training. I'm, my mom remembers that March because I'm pretty sure I called her crying every day. And it was just like, oh, my gosh, we have a new coach, and I'm playing horribly, and this is all he knows. Like, this is going to be so bad. This is, like, the worst first impression. Like, yes. So that was my first impression of Darren. <laughs> That's so, not an easy way to start. Yeah. You're nervous coming back that August. Yeah. So that was definitely, that was challenging to say the least. I think I was, I just remember being a little stressed out, just hearing things, obviously. I don't know if you guys, how well you guys know Darren. Darren is awesome. He's great. He is very intense, though. <laughs> And yeah, and so I remember just being very nervous going into my junior year, um, but also just feeling a lot more comfortable because, you know, junior year, that's like you're an upperclassman now, you've been here longer, you kind of know what to expect, and you kind of have your role on the team, and I think just seeing that, and I think our team adjusted very well to the changes. Um and that was our first year making it to the SEC tournament. And that was just so exciting. And then being able to win a game in the SEC tournament was just like, we were all just so hype. And so, yeah. And then I ended up redshirting my junior, my senior year, or what would have been my senior year. Um, I ended up competing in the Olympic trials for track and field. And so that was in July. And I wouldn't have had enough time to get prepared for soccer season since preseason, I want to say, was like two or three weeks after that. So got to redshirt and just trained for a year, essentially, and then came back my senior year. So, yeah. Wow. So take us from there. You're finishing your senior year. You guys have, you know, you, you've been a part of turning, you know, a corner for the, for the Vanderbilt program. Those two guys are both friends of mine. I'm not, you know, they both played a part in Vanderbilt, you know, yeah. moving from one step to another, from now another step to now the SEC tournament consistently and winning in the SEC tournament and going to NCAA tournaments. They've had some great coaches that have come through Vanderbilt University and you've got a chance to work with two of the two of the best. So now you're you're finishing your senior year. What when did it click in for you that you thought there would be a possibility or that your goal was going to be to pursue playing soccer as a professional? Yeah, so I would say playing pro soccer was always kind of in the back of my mind. That was always something that I wanted to do. Um, I think coming off of my senior year or my fifth year, essentially, mm -hmm. I wasn't really sure how or if it would happen. I had a lot of injuries my fifth year. I like strained both hamstrings. I strained my foot. It hurt my ankle twice. <laughs> like it was just like. Starting to become an old lady all, already. <laughs> yeah. I want to say by the end of the season, I was wearing like two hamstring sleeves. I had both ankles taped, my foot taped. I just, everything, it was wild. So, yeah, I think, and I also, 
I'd struggled my fifth year. It was not my best soccer to say the least. And so I wanted to play pro soccer, but I wasn't exactly sure how or if it would happen. Um, And so I declared for the NWSL draft and did not get drafted. And so I got a call from, actually I was in class (laughs) and I got a call from Darren first. (laughs) And it was like, so I like leave class and Darren's like, I just, I just got off the phone with Mark Parsons, like talking about you and all this kind of stuff. He's probably going to call you soon. Like, don't mess it up. (laughs) No, not don't mess it up. (laughs) But just like, he's going to call you soon say the right things. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so then I get a call from Mark and wow. just talk about um, the possibilities. Like you can come out here. We can't really guarantee anything, but you can try out. We'll just see how it goes and just kind of go from there. And so I came to Portland my in 2018. So I was able to finish. I was in a master's program at the time, but luckily I was able to like finish up my credits before then so I was able to leave for the spring what would have been the spring semester um and yeah came to Portland for preseason I tried out and I did not make the team and I remember being heartbroken to say the least you know just being used to being a go-to go-to player on the team and like knowing where your place is and stuff like that and then trying out and not even making the team like that was definitely hard and humbling to say the least and so I ended up training with Portland Thorns for that entire season uh ate a fair share my fair share of humble pie (laughs) learning literally from some of the best players in the world so that I think has been the most helpful thing just seeing how like my teammate Tobin Heath and Sink and all of the, how they train and watching them and taking notes and pros pros. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, I just, I trained with the team for a year and then came back the next last year, 2019. 2019 yeah. Yeah. And preseason essentially was a, a tryout for me again. And I ended up making it that time. So now it's my second year with the Thorns, and it's been it's been an awesome experience. Well, Simone, as we wrap up kind of this transition from you going from a, a door to now a thorn, um, you know, you, you've seen a lot. You've you experienced a lot of different cultures. You've been all across our country now playing in a professional sport, which was one of the first to come back during our pandemic to, you know, seeing all that's going on. Tell me, you know, kind of what you see as the next step. There's a lot of people who are so nervous now. All, a lot of the women's national teams players are leaving the NWSL and are going to England. Uh, you know, there's, you know, gosh, we could spend a day, forget about an interview, but a day talking about what's going on in Utah. Um, you know, and, and that's relevant to the whole conversation of social justice as we, as we talk moving forward. But Tell me sort of what you're anticipating moving at the end of your second, your third year in Portland, but your second year on the team into this completion of the season with three games left and then into next year. Yeah, um, I definitely think this has been a challenging year for everyone. And so many things, so many unexpected things have happened, almost to the point that I'm like, I don't feel like I can predict what's going to happen next per se. Um, But I will say, I do think the league is headed in a positive direction. I'm excited about um, the expansions that are happening with Louisville coming in next year and then LA happening the following year. I think that's just a sign of the health of the league and how we were able to pull off the challenge cup and stay in the bubble and, Every, no one contract coronavirus and everyone stay healthy and everything like that. And so I am proud of the league and I'm proud of, and I, I'm pretty confident in the future of it. As far as everything else happening though, I don't really know. <laughs> well, well, contract wise, will you, are you still under contract for Portland coming into next year? You know, how, how does that, or we, will you expect to see you back with the thorns next year or how, do, how does that all stand at this point? Yeah, so my contract with the Thorns ends at the end of this year. 
And so, yeah, we'll see what happens. So there's a lot up in the air, not just in the world, but even in the pro career, <laughs> yeah. the, the life and times of Simone Charlie. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. So Simone, we now we've gone from, from Boston to Hoover to Nashville to Portland. That's quite a journey. There's not much more <laughs> east or west we can go in our country. Um, so now what we want to do, we're going to take a break here. We're going to complete section two of our interview. And when we come back, I want to talk to you about your perspective on some of the things we've experienced as a, as a people, as a country. Um, you know, we're Southerners. I grew up in Tennessee. You grew up in Alabama. Um, you know, you talk about Louisville and how exciting it is that we're having pro soccer, pro women's soccer is coming to Louisville. I, I took my seven-year-old daughter by that stadium the other day when we were driving through Louisville so I could show it to her. I'm so excited to be able to go there and watch professional women's soccer games. There's some other things happening in Louisville that don't make me smile as much. So when we come back, let's talk about our world. I really would value your perspective as a, a very well-spoken, very energetic, very charismatic young black woman who's experiencing our world in a much different way than I am as an older white man. So let's come back and talk about the, a shared perspective you can help us to try to see how you're processing through your lens some of the things that are happening in our world. That's what we're going to do when we come back to TSSA Talks. <laughs> 